I'm here with Seth After, and Seth is going to show us how to add sort of texture and dimension and all sorts of stuff, right? Absolutely. I'm all about layers. I'm all about dimension. And so I'm going to create some great collages using die cuts, but with dimension. I love it. So we're going to start with just plain cardstock. But plain cardstock is just too plain. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint it up. So what I would normally do, not really worry about what the first layer looks like. I'm just going to take some paint. I'm going to squeeze it out. I'm going to brush it on. I'm going to do that a few times until I get something that looks like that. Now, you really meant like you're not at all let, worried about the paper showing through or it being really nope. anything. You're using a dry brush and you're just sort of I'm going. I'm just going. I'm not even thinking. And the truth is, is it's the first layer. It's going to be covered. You don't have to worry about it. This is a great thing to do with your kids. They can help you out. Everybody exactly, can no, no one can ha have trouble with it. Everyone's a painter. Yeah. But what I want to do is make it even more dimensional, so I'm going to add some stamps to it. Okay, Maybe. and I know you have this big, huge um, yep, texture stamp here. A jumbo here. texture stamp there. And it's one of those cling foam stamps where it actually, um, it's rubber, Correct. but it has cling on it so that it's going to stick to a block if you want. Are you a block or a blockless stamper? Mostly I'm a blockless. I don't want perfect, Ooh, yes. I okay. don't want a perfect impression. In fact, I want an impression that's imperfect. And so that's a good tip by the way, which is using a block make, gives you a more perfect impression and not using a block gives you that more casual, imperfect Correct. impression. Correct. I want to make any stamp I use, including one I design, my own. And by the way, tiny ink pad, big stamp, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And you can just see the way I'm doing it as I'm pressing the stamp into the ink pad. That's the traditional way to do it. And then I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to press. I'm not worried about oh, which wow. direction. Oh, wow. So you're not even trying to get the whole stamp. You're not nope. worried about the fact that it's ghosting or getting not lighter. At all. I you're just kind like of that. like all I, over the place. That, that way, without thinking, you mm -hmm. get unevenness. And the truth is that sometimes thinking is the worst thing you can do for creativity. Oh, my gosh. I agree. So now what I'm going to do is add the die cut. That is really what I want. So I want you to help me here. I'm going to use that one. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and I can feel something rolling okay, around so in here. Okay. So this die is just a metal die uh -huh. and it has a blade on it. The blade is safe. Wait, is it, though. I was going to say, is it going to yes, cut me when I dump I this out? As I put your hand in there. The blade is completely safe. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking this as your background. You're going to make a second sheet that's going to become the sheet you die cut. Now, this is slightly darker in color. Is that on purpose? That is absolutely on purpose. I know that I'm going to place it on top of the background, so mm -hmm. I want to make sure that it pops. But it's the same color but darker, which same is a nice color way family, the same of hue. coordinating. Exactly. It, it will always go. I'm going to use a die cut machine, an embossing machine, and there's a sandwich that you have to make. For every machine, there's a platform, there's a cutting plate. I'm going to put my paper to cut. I'm going to put my die. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to give me that other piece so I can oh, reach there it. You go. It's and right I'm going there. to place it in there as well. So it fits exactly in there then. But yeah. I see you're not really being careful about putting it in there. You kind of tossed it. I'm not careful I'm, about I'm anything. I'm getting a apparently. sense that this so. is not like a really careful or fussy project. This is no. just do and what you what, want. That's Whoop. what makes it fun. So I've taken it through the machine. I'm uh -huh. going to then, all I need to do is just press out my dies. And when I do that, uh huh. You can You're gonna see get that image. I'm gonna get that image. Okay, but Seth, your uh, paper is stuck to your die there. Oh yeah, I just just poke it out. <laughs> there you so go. So I'm gonna do some poking, mm -hmm. which is always fun to do when you're making art. And then you just art. sort of slowly take it apart. Now, is this Correct. a ring of fire? Is this, does it matter? It doesn't matter. This is just the choice that I made. It's one of my mm -hmm. dies. I like it because it's kind of grungy and abstract. Kind it feels of like, like paint me. dripping, or it could yep. even be like a dream catcher or yes, something it that looks with a lot feathers like a dream hanging catcher. down. If you place it that. Way and you can draw a little face. You have some oh, fun with that too. Oh, yeah, right? super cute little guy. Little crazy hair. So, what I'm going to do is really easily, I'm mm -hmm. going to use a glue stick. I'm not really worried. I was going to say, you're not gluing carefully no. either. Yeah, you get you get the drill with me. Yes, I do. And then I'm going to decide where to place it. It's all about your artist eye, where you want to put mm -hmm. it. And I'm going to place it about there. Mm -hmm. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another stamp because there's a lot of empty space there. Yeah. And this time, I'm actually going to take the stamp and I'm going to mount it on an acrylic block okay. because I want a better impression. That's right, because we said unmounted stamp is going to be sort of a Very looser random. and a mounted stamp is going to be a more careful Correct. impression. But you are using the same color of ink, which I, I find am. interesting. I want it to blend, but I also want it to pop. And you'll see that it does for, because of something I'm going to do after. To blend and pop. Yeah, I say that three times fast. <laughs> I don't All think right, I so could. I've stamped it. And the reason why I wanted to use a block is because I wanted that word to be clear. Then what I'm going to do is use all my other die cuts. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add to it. But another way to make the die cuts your own is you can take a single die cut and you can just take a pair of scissors to it. And then you can make a whole new die cut. I was going to say, and then as a benefit, you happen to you now have, have two other others. extra little exactly. pieces here, too. So when I go ahead, and I finish it, mm -hmm. let me get that out of the way. 
You and see one of the things I was going to say is that I think it's so interesting that even though this is the exact same dye, because the paper is slightly different, it actually appears to be quite different. So exactly. that's another thing that customizing your own paper can do for you. Yes, it takes it and makes it your own. I want to make this pop more. You mentioned that some of the colors are similar. So what mm -hmm. I'm going to do is I'm going to just use a, a transparent ink pen. This is India ink. It's interesting. Why did you choose color. yellow with the blue? I'm curious. Well, I knew that with the blue underneath it, it would turn it into a little bit of green, and I thought that would be a really great contrast. So you are kind of still thinking of color mixing a little bit in your mind that is when you're true. adding a layer of any kind. That is true, because I know it will mix. I'm also going to outline. I always outline my die cuts. What that's going to do is it's going to ground it into the base. It's also going to make it pop. And collage is basically something stuck to something mm -hmm. else. You want to do these kinds of techniques. Would you do both to sides of the pop. line or would you only do one side? You can do either. In okay. this case, the finished sample, what I did was both sides, but you can shadow it on one side. You can do lots of different effects. Finishing touches is where really you, you make your collage your own. So I do a lot of different things with the gel pen. I'm going to go around the edges and I'm going to make some outlines. Depending uh, upon. Very careful lines. Exactly. I noticed that you you're, know, you're very carefully if, trying if to make an outline here. You can see it's a perfect <laughs> straight line. Oh, I like that you put an X there right. even. So this is just, again, adding more this texture, adding. more interest, just Correct. something you else can add that little goes circles. there. Anybody who says they can't draw when you do this, <laughs> you can. And then the other thing is I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some marks in the center. Mm -hmm. And then really to finish it off, one of my favorite techniques is to add a little bit of splatter. Can't have mm -hmm. a ribbon grunge without splatter. So I have a very special way that I do it. I will get my paint on my palette, mm -hmm. I will wet it so it's watery, and I'll use a toothbrush. I'll soak it up, and I'll just spray with my fingers like that. And we can like see that. that splatter right on the finished piece. It's absolutely fantastic. Lots of layers of yummy goodness to look at.